Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. Okay, today is Thursday and um, I want to trace out this pattern that is a nativity. Now we haven't had a prompt for nativity, um, but I definitely want one in there. And because I have a pretty busy weekend coming up and I may or may not get videos actually made, um, I've got friends coming from Melbourne and they're joining my husband and another Brisbane gentleman uh, at the pinball competition in town. So far as I know, they're only competing the Saturday and Sunday. I won't be going in because I find it boring standing and watching because I'm not competing. So I may get two days of crafting, which will be just fantastic. Really looking forward to it. So the next couple days, Thursday, Friday, it'll be entertaining, cooking and having a bit of fun catching up. Having said that, they're now talking about going in to watch the comp um, because it's actually been going since last weekend. And they um, want to go in and just hang out and chat and, you know, do whatever you do. So that means I might actually get four days of... Um, making videos and crafting so a little bit excited about that so what i thought i'd do in today's video now we've all got our prompts um i've just finished watching rachel and sarah's video so it's wreath so i've got a few ideas mulling around which i'll sort of probably chat through with you just to sort of help me clear my thoughts while i work on this nativity piece and of course if the weekend turns out to be crazy busy and i just do not get back into my room this is at least stitched, um, ready to stitch. Doesn't require too much thought. I can even take it somewhere and stitch it. And at least it's, you know, doing something. So that's the plan. Now, this um, pattern is from uh, this little Joy to the World. It's a nativity sampler. And in there is this little um, embroidery, which they've done on a little uh, wall hanging. So I found the pattern in amongst all this and I just photocopied it so that I had a copy of it. So the plan is to, using my pen, trace the pattern onto the fabric. Now let me just put that back in there. I see you're all very pleased to see some of the patterns that I found in my cupboard and you've all gone digging as well, which is fantastic. I think a few of you are quite surprised at how much you actually had Christmas pattern wise in your uh, cupboards. So that's really good. It'd be great if we can use some of these things we've purchased in years gone by. So as my background is calico, I can actually see really clearly the uh, design through without a light or having to use a window or transfer paper but I am going to pin it because if I'm talking away it'll take the pressure off of it needing to be you know held nice and secure so I'm just going to pin it to my page and that way it will not go anywhere I even like joy to the world there. I might even actually, that's part of her name of the pattern. I might even trace that as well. That'd be fun to stitch. So what am I doing with this pattern? Well, at the moment, it's just stitching it. Having said that, I was sort of watching their video with the wreath thinking about this nativity scene that will go into my book. I've got a few spare pages in the red book. So I am thinking along the lines of red work and it could go maybe on the inside cover or well pretty much it could go anywhere because I can add pages in if needed. So I'm thinking along the lines of red work but maybe embellishing it with lace pieced in amongst it. So what I mean by that is, um, where's a piece of lace? For example, let's say, I've just got this piece of lace here. 
I lay it down and then sketch the design on top of the lace and then stitch over the top of it. So the lace sort of becomes embedded within the um, work. That's one option. I could, like they do in the pattern, see how they've used fabric to um, actually applique the piece. So I could pick out sections of it and lay in some fabrics. Like I could probably do something with um, baby Jesus. I could do the little crib and maybe lace around him. I don't know. So I've got a few options or maybe I'll have such a crazy busy weekend that just a little bit of red work sitting by the couch while they're watching movies um, might be enough, you know, without having to think too hard, which I'd be more than happy with. I don't have to, you know, embellish everything. So, I don't know. I was thinking blue for the banner as well. I thought, okay, well, you need any more banners I can make, the better. You know, the longer it'll be, the better. So maybe I stitch it in blue work and add it to the banners. I don't know. Actually, before I... I better check that the banner fabric fits. Okay, hold the phone. Let's get the banner project and have a look at the backgrounds to make sure that this piece is going to be okay. Okay. I need some... There we go. It's a little bit bigger, but that's, that's fine because I can... If it does go into blue, all I'd need to remove yeah, is barely anything. So that's, that's okay. So I can make this blue, which would be really pretty. Have I shown you my finished title page? I don't think I have. There we go. My title page for my blue book, my banner slash advent calendar is finished. So let's, let's just leave that tracing for a moment and have a little look at that. So what did I do extra? I think it's really just background work. This is a day or so ago now. So seed stitch everywhere. Um, I added a little bit more embellishing in the rosette and I also found some little buttons that have a pearl finish. It's got very blingy. You can see the sparkle there in those faceted beads. So I've certainly added some more little buttons. Um, oh, I know what I did. I added around the edge some trims, so I stitched onto the back all the way around some different um, laces just to create a bit of a textured frame. So that is two different ones there. That's just little nylon, common, very, very 80s lace, nothing real special. This one is a hand dyed one that I purchased from a local um, patchwork shop here in Brisbane. That's a little bit of fringing off of a table runner that's been kicking around in my stash for a little while. You can even see the back of the table runner that it came from. I nearly stitched this side up because that little uh, bit of brown actually sort of suited, but I decided just to keep it neutral. Uh, I then put on the bottom some hand dyed blue lace from that same patchwork shop. So it sort of gave it a, a lovely little edge around my piece. What else did I do? Oh, up in the top corner, um, I finished the holly piece of fabric off just with some running stitch around it. I then started building another little cluster of beads there. You can see those sparkling away and added one of those little pearl buttons. I then had a piece of twine sitting on my desk. So I made a little bow and stitched that on. So this top corner is very neutral. I had plans on doing more of this blue beadwork and uh, champagne tones up there, but I ended up just sort of taking a breath up here, just sort of keeping it very neutral. And I really like how that's come out. Um, what else did I do? I think that was about it. Oh, I did, 
on this fabric, there was a little floral treatment. So I put a tiny little pearl in the center of all of those flowers. I was going to seed stitch it, but it sort of would have lost the design because it's so fine, the seed stitch just would have muddied it. So I decided just to enhance it with just a itty bitty pearl, which sort of suited that natural corner. Um, what else did I do? I ended up, this fabric here was a bit of a trick. I couldn't decide what to do with that background. If I seed stitched it, and once again, it would have probably looked muddy. Um, if I made little X's out of the dots, cause it's a perfect spot to stitch a little X, that also would look a little bit too much because the dots are so close together. So in the end, I just left it. Whether I come back with an idea, I don't know. I think the doily in itself is its feature. I just could not come up with anything I really liked for that blue. Um, I stitched my monogram on the bottom using one of those laundry labels. So really happy with that. Um, and I think that's it. So that um, page is complete. Pretty happy with that winter wonderland. So that's going to sit on the front of my book for all of the um, blue banners and themes. So really pleased with the way that came up. It's not real Christmassy, but it sort of does bring in that winter um, wonderland theme, the second theme, even though it's not, you know, technically real Christmassy. I've certainly got plenty of Christmas coming in the banners, so I'm not too worried about that. So yeah, really happy with that. One title page complete. So um, thoroughly enjoyed that. It's really nice working with those blues. It's not something I do all the time. So really loving that um, midnighty, dusty sort of blue. So yeah, happy, happy, happy. Haven't thought too much more about my title page for my red book. Um, don't know, something will come to mind. Now wreath, got a few ideas. Um, I love what Rachel did with the piecing of the leaves. Love that idea. So I'm thinking at least a three-dimensional wreath is a must with some form of leaf in there. But I can't be too bulky because that's just a bit of a a curse I have with these pieces is they get so thick. I love what Sarah did, but if I do that, my book is just going to be six inches deep. So what I'm thinking of doing, which um, I've been sort of thinking about on the side, is around December I want to do a series of videos making Christmas decorations for your Christmas tree in the style that I love, lace and doilies and crocheting. So I'm working on little prototypes at the moment and I think I've got six nutted out. And when I saw Sarah's wreath, I thought, well, I can still have a play with a wreath like that and I'll make a Christmas decoration out of it. That way it's not bulky in my book. So I think I'll still do that and um, that'll be part of the series for December um, so that'll be fun sorry about my finger too I'm just in the wars lately that's bandit my puppy dog he's given me a, a chomp I just noticed it sitting there so I do apologize if that's grossing you out but I've got a very playful puppy and we collided I was hosing off the patio ready for our guests for the weekend. And he loves the hose. He chomps at the water. And usually I'm aware of what I'm doing and he doesn't get me because I sort of spray it out in the grass and he plays and then he sort of loses interest. But I was concentrating on getting some of the muddy footprints off of everywhere. And he come in to chomp at the water and yes, you guessed it. He got me. So not his fault, but 
I think I might have to address that behavior because I can't have him getting all excited and chomping at the hose when I'm using it because we're going to collide again and it may not end well for me and he's a big boy so I think I need to do a little training around the hose which is hard because it's so hot here in Queensland in summer so to have him play with water and hose and you know cools him down it's a bit of fun so it's a bit of a shame but it's one of those behaviors that could end badly especially if a child picked up the hose and he come in hot for a, a chomp so i'm gonna have to sort that out so unfortunate for bandit i might have to come up with a way of teaching him that now he can play with the hose but when i'm doing patio work no sit back and watch okay so i've missed a bit of the sheep here am i still on camera yep so back to the wreath the blue one will be a challenge the red one i think is going to be easy because i've got this doily and it's nearly a wreath in itself so i could cut out components of it and reconstruct it with more embroidery and beads which is sort of where i'm tending i love this sort of finish on it and if i embellish with some more bits and pieces i could create a whole new wreath so i think the red one's actually going to be pretty easy so that will be fine the blue one i'm not sure yet so i'll have to hop on pinterest and see what i can find but i do have one idea um lisa mattock mattock from the uh for um forage has a alfred panel pattern quilt that i um have made a few of the alfreds from and it's a series of birds stitched onto a panel which makes into a quilt and each little bird has a little embroidery with it really good um, way of learning stitches it's uh, a lovely pattern book so you buy it online through lisa's website and then print it off and i just took it to office works and had it bound so i'm thinking with the blue banner is i make a wreath um using maybe as techniques that Rachel's used. And then in the center of the wreath, I pop a little Alfred bird. Now the birds themselves are like pieces. And so you can have a play, once you've cut out all your templates, you can play with just creating your own style of bird. So I can certainly, that's the quilt there, so pretty. That'd just be beautiful worked up in um, your favorite colors so if you are looking for a great bird pattern book i can highly recommend uh alfred it's on her website and once you cut out your panels like i said you just piece together the bodies the wings the tails and there's so many combinations you can do and of course um, lisa's put together 12 already for you so it's a really good good start so i'm thinking of doing a bluebird uh, on a wreath using some leaves maybe a smattering of them I wouldn't be able to go too crazy because I don't want that bulk but I'm thinking a bluebird with some leaves maybe some holly in blues stitched around it maybe I make the wreath very pale blue and then the bird is in the darker blue so he really pops um yeah so that's where i'm at with my wreath thinking i think my red wreath will be poncetia based and embroidery beads and embellishing and my blue advent calendar will be a little bit of uh, rachel's work and um a bluebird 
using Lisa's Elfric pattern. So it's good, I think, to have a bit of a plan. I was going to jump straight into it this morning and I thought, no, I just want to mull it over. I really enjoy the thinking of it all. So sometimes when I get the prompt, I just wait a couple days just to come up with as many ideas as I can in my mind and then see which one gets me excited. And you'll know when you've got your idea because you're just, you're busting to get to your craft room. So at the moment, I'm still mulling it over. We're um, heading off to the airport to pick up our friends. What's the time? It's uh, 5.30. I've been up since um, 4.30. Made the coffee, fed the cats. Haven't fed the dogs yet, but um, come in here to start this video. And I noticed that they were on Facebook, so I pinged them and they're sitting at the airport. So I think their flight's at 6.30. So we'll have to head over and pick them up. And then I thought I might take them to breakfast at a, a hotel slash beer garden on the way that does a fantastic uh, breakfast. I'm just looking at this wording here. And I would like to include it, but I think it's going to be in the wrong spot there. Or will it? What am I thinking? I'm thinking of putting it over here because I've got a little bit more space. But then this could be a great spot just to st lay down a bit of texture. So you can, uh, you know, lace and beads and that. Because the design is a little bit over, I sort of want to create a bit of air on this side to lay down things. For example, you know, there might be a bit of, bit of lace and then another layer of lace, you know, building it up. So I don't mind that that's there. I might leave it where it is. And I guess if I don't stitch it, it doesn't matter. I can just iron over this and it'll disappear. But it would be nice to have the name of the pattern on the piece or not at all who knows and even then it's joy to the world so it works anyway i'll know it's a pattern name but anyone who glances at this won't probably twig that that's the case what was i saying about the airport pick them up at the airport take them to breakfast at a hotel on the way we do a lovely breakfast and then we're going to call into our Christmas shop on the south side of Brisbane and show them that and the gentleman that's coming by himself his wife unfortunately couldn't make it she had to work so I want to um, send back with him some Christmas decorations for her Christmas tree as a bit of a sorry you couldn't make it we miss you so We'll slip into the shop and I'll get him to help me pick a few things and send back a little care package. I've lost my way there with that. So that's grass, hay. I think I've got it all. Doesn't really matter. I can always refer to the image and come back. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so I'll get rid of my pins and I might just have a bit of fossica through my laces here. So it would be beautiful in that red. Yeah, okay, let's see. What have we got in the way of bits and pieces that could be laid in? that paper and some pins ouch pin cushion just bit me okay <clears throat> I do like that already and a little lamby could either be stitched 
over the lace or on the lace. I think I'm going to have that coming off a little bit. I'm going to pin it there for now. It doesn't have to stay. It's the great thing about this type of work is you can pin a few random things around and then have a think about it. But I certainly want to add texture to my little nativity scene. And if the girls end up adding nativity scene to one of the prompts, well, I'm, I'm in, aren't I? I'm done. I can do something else. Some little snippets of bits and pieces. I love this piece here. I come in a pack from someone, but I just haven't found a home for it yet. So it won't fit on that one. What else have I got here? No. A little flower. Maybe that could be part of her dress. Or the babies. Hmm. I don't know. I'll just pin it up there for now. That little piece of embroidery. What else have I got? And I'll just show you what I'm working on. When I went on holidays about a month ago, I took a bit of lace with me and I used one of these packs. Oh, that's dangerous, that pin cushion, where it's just lots and lots of um, pockets. And I just grabbed so much stuff and shoved it in there and I haven't unpacked it. I'm finding it quite handy. It's just sitting on my desk and I can rummage through it. So I just haven't, yeah, tidied it up. But I don't think it matters. There's a nice little piece of lace. That there might work as part of the baby. The baby outfit. Whether it stays or not, who knows? I'm just having fun piecing together something. What else have I got in here? I've been thinking a bit about next month's videos. If you're following me, you'll notice that I've got a Junk Journal July project going. So every day you're getting a video with um, Junk Journal July. And it's all about building a journal for um, a trip to Japan that may happen in the future. It didn't happen due to COVID. So I've been uh, making those videos and thoroughly enjoying it because it's just given me a bit of a break from stitching. What about this piece? Oh, no. You're probably thinking, what is she doing? The red work would be beautiful by itself. But you know how it is. You can't just stop at something like that. Yeah, so when the Japanese series stops, the Junk Journal July, um, I won't have a daily video so i'm thinking about some other themes i could do and do a little bit of junk journal something so yeah i've been racking my brain and making a bit of a short list and i've come up with a few ideas i definitely want to do a series of christmas decorations later in the um year so that's december taken care of if I could come up with 12, that'd be great. I'm going to move that out of there and just do a bit of a lacy cluster that's building on this corner. Bit of interest. Because I just love that design and I think embroidered might be just enough. So um, what are we in July? So August, September, October, November. So there's four potential projects that I could do each day work on just to sort of you know have something 
something to do. So I've come up with some basic themes. I don't know what I'm going to make yet. It'll be something, you know, junk journal-ish. Or not junk, journal-ish. With some scissors. So I'm thinking along the lines of um, picking a kit of paper from a designer and making something focused on that particular designer. So the first designer, well, actually he's very famous, but there's two companies or two um, journal people that have made kits. And that's uh, the William Morris imagery. So I'm thinking about doing a William Morris inspired uh, journal. And I have picked up um, from a, a patchwork shop, a pack of William Morris fabric, which is, you know, burning a hole in my cupboard because, you know, me and fabric and stitching. And if I can incorporate that into a journal somehow or make something along those lines, that would be a little exciting. So the William Morris project is floating around in the back of my head. And I love Edith Holding. And I have managed to secure just about all the books that she has ever had published, give or take a couple that just didn't interest me. And now I'm starting to find multiples of them. I don't know, they just seem to be coming my way for some reason. And when I Google, Google her books, there's quite a lot for sale around the place anyway. So I'm thinking about doing a, um, a tribute to Edith Holden and make a project that, um, oh, I like that. Oops, I'm not on camera. I'm just building up this lace on this corner. And I just found that piece, which I'm rather liking. I wonder if I... Yeah, so William Morris, Edith Holding, two of my favourite designers slash artists. There was a lady that had on Etsy the Edith Holden pages were a selection of them and I purchased the kit and I've gone back looking for it. It's probably over a year and a half ago. I've gone back looking for it and she has removed it, which I think is probably would be the case because I don't think she could have been allowed to scan that and then sell it as a kit, digital kit. So... I do own that pack and I'm very reluctant to actually use it because I think she may have probably got into trouble for doing that. But I have enough of the books that I'd be pretty pretty okay with um, pulling one apart. And what I thought for the project was I completely pull one book down and get as much out of it as I can in the way of ephemera pages and journal covers. So that would be the challenge for the month. What can we make out of the book to, I'm just gonna snip that. See that little bit there? It's bugging me. It's half of this image here, of this piece of embroidery. So I'm just going to cut that away. Plus it's bumping into the words. So I'm just gonna trim that away. I think that looks a lot better. I love how that shape is mimicked around the place. So one month, it could be everything to do with Edith Holding and pulling apart a book. There's plenty of the books around now. Um, they're popping up everywhere. The average price is $30. And I'm thinking if I can make a couple journals out of it and a heap of ephemera, um, that would be, you know, a lot of fun. Um, what was the other project I thought of? Oh, well, Christmas is sort of coming up. So... I've done a few journals over the years with Rachel's kits. So I sat down yesterday and I had a look at what kits I had purchased from Rachel. And I think there's three that I had bought over the years. Um, and I think I have enough with those three to actually do something. I love this scrolly fabric. 
So I'm thinking of um, doing a Christmas series, probably November. Make the journal in November and then, you know, we've got time to actually use it in December. And then December will be the Christmas decorations because our Christmas tree is up. So as we make the decorations, we can actually take them to the Christmas tree and hang them. So that's what I'm thinking. So what are we, July now? August. Let's, for example, let's say William Morris is August. July, August. September is Edith. October. Don't have anything. Um, November would be Rachel, uh, Roxy Creations, Christmas. And then December would be the decorations. Maybe October. Here we go. Let's not start a new project. Let's tidy up one that's hanging around. It's going to be October. That will make me feel better. I will probably have leftovers from Edith and William. So October will be any leftovers plus dig out something that needs to be completed. Now I do have a feeling I have heaps of bits and pieces printed still from... Um, Rachel's kits and it'd be a, a mix of kits there it could be anything in amongst that lot I'm really liking this I'm sort of creating this thing up in the top corner here that might be too big for the book where's my book that hanging over there let me grab the red book and we'll just check sizes not that it really matters I might put this on the back cover that would give me a little bit more space if that went on the back here I could pull that right down yeah if that went right to the edge of the cover oh you're not even on camera sorry guys so if I pull that down to there And that lace could, uh, it's going to bump into the spine. So I might have to trim that back. What a shame. How can I make that fit? See, the reason, uh, pull it up in shot here. I can pull it right down and it can hang down the bottom here, no problems. And then I could build more lace here. But I do like this fabric peeking through here. So I sort of want to... Hmm. Maybe I've got to get rid of joy to the world. And have this piece... Oh, it sort of suits the corner. Let's just unpin it all. I know I like that together. So let's maybe get this guy in position so we know he fits. Now, how do we do that? If we pivot that more. marginally better yeah yeah I like that that works I can make that fit there I've got my red border down here to help frame it I can then potentially pop something in up the top edge here because I'm sort of a little bit, yeah. I can add a lace across that top edge now. I think Joy to the World is gone, so forget about that. And I'm loving that. And there might be some more little pieces of crocheting 
maybe that little grid, that piece there can, oh, let's pin that because that's, that's going to work there. I tell you, when I was doing red work back in the 90s, it was just straight red work. We didn't do anything but just stitch this in um, back stitch or satin stitch. You could sort of do little combinations of stitches. So we'd never have thought to put lace in amongst it, but slow stitch has opened up a whole world of adding textures to our pieces. And I just love it because it just makes it a little bit more interesting. I'm not just tracing and stitching it in. So what I might do then is might lay that piece somewhere. See, once again, I'm too high. So maybe... Maybe it's got to build out along there. Maybe I've got to get rid of this little piece. So, yeah, so as I was saying, I'm thinking about my daily project, we'll call it. And then in amongst it, you get this project. So some days you get two videos. So depending on how much work I've got to do on stitching, you may even get daily two videos it just depends on time because this is a lot of work as you are all finding out. So at least with a daily project, I can set it up, just sit down, do 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour, whatever takes my fancy and leave the mess and walk away. So it's in sort of in a second filming area. So I'll have my daily... William Morris or Edith Holden or Don't Start Another Project, Finish What's in Your Cupboard, Corinne pro Month, which will be October. And I think it will be Roxy Creations because I've got a few journal covers that are half made and just need to be made into something, which would be handy because then I'd have probably have some Christmas presents being made. I've got a few. I'd like to make a few journals for Christmas gifts. So Edith, William and... Roxy would be a nice little stash of journals to have in my cupboard. And then um, December would be ready for Christmas decorations for the Christmas tree. I'm just looking in my little box of tricks here to see if there's anything else I could add. Little piece of lace. I could probably lay that in behind. Not liking the colour, to be honest. Don't know if I've got anything left in here that's of use. I might have to go further afoot when it comes. Oh, there's a little piece of tatting. So that's my plan for the rest of the year. So if you like the idea of all that, drop me a comment. If you're happy enough to suffer through some more videos. That's an unusual tree. It's twisted and it's a bit of a mess. Anyway, stop looking at it. I think that's probably it for now of what I can find here. Here's something else. That's come off of a round doily. That's got potential. Just as another layer. Yeah, I like that. Should it go up the top here? I think I like it up here, actually. Puts a nice little pin that one there. So I'm sort of creating a frame of crocheted snippet bits around the top of my nativity. And I'm keeping them as neutral as possible at the moment. 
and that should make the red in the center really pop. Ouch. Between puppy dogs and pins and needles, my hands at the moment are just getting injured. We bought this little cooker because it's going to rain all weekend. I've run out of pins. It's going to rain all weekend and we had plans for the bonfire. And then I do a few meals on the fire just for something different, just a change. And of course it's going to rain. So um, we've purchased an Aussie big pig, it's called. And it's it looks like a uh, a gas bottle that's been two of them have been welded together and opened up and the in goes your, your logs and then on the top of it so it's a gas bottle shape it's not gas bottles it's the shape and on the top of it is some grids that you can cook on uh, hot plates and you know for grilling steak and things like that and it um, so we've had a few practice runs and it is really cool really fun but it's hot very very hot so my hands I can just I can see what's coming because you're so used to cooking inside you go and grab the handle of a fry pan and um, it's sitting not on an open flame but there's certainly some radiant heat there and you go and pick it up and it's like ouch so I've bought <laughs> I've bought some gloves that are heat protecting gloves you know so I thought, I, I know it'll happen. I'll be talking away. I get so distracted. I'll be yibber-yabbering away. I'll have my tongs in my hand and my hands will be flipping around everywhere and be sausages flying and steaks and you name it. And then I'll go to grab a fry pan and forget that I'm not, you know, in my kitchen with a nice insulated handle that never, ever gets hot. And I'm actually on a fire. So I've got these gloves to protect my hands just in case. I'm loving that. And I think what I'll do is, where's a ruler? Where's my ruler? Here it is. I like to add a frame to things, sort of a simple stitch line. So I'm just gonna draw in a simple line. We'll pretend that the joy to the world's now gone. And I'm just going to draw it in and potentially stitch it in as well. And it just helps connect your image. You can see that there. So the lace is the frame, but then we're just going to simplify things and um, add a, another frame. And I've done it about a quarter of an inch from the edge. So I'm just going to put a line there as well. That's a bit crooked. And that, um, yeah, connects your picture together. Okay, loving that. There's a project ready to go that I don't have to think about. I could even take it with me to the airport and stitch while we wait for the guests to arrive. It's going to be in um, DMC number eight cotton 304. I'm pretty, pretty sure it will be. Unless that is a nightmare to stitch with, I might then flip back to DMC um, stranded cotton, which is this one here. So we'll see. I've got the two out anyway to have a little play with. As for the wreath, um, if I get time, I'll pop back and start working on the next prompt. Otherwise, you may not see me for the next couple of days. And when they uh, chuff off home on Tuesday, I will turn the camera back on and next week work on the wreath, the bluebird in the wreath and then a Ponsettia red wreath of some description. Okay, anyway, I'll leave it at that. Enjoy your weekend if I don't see you again and um, I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.